Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal. I am Nancy, and in this week's video, we are going to go over some jobs that you can do in your garden in February. Now, this is mainly uh, structured for a zone seven, but I'm sure six, eight, you know, you have a little wiggle room that you can also uh, do these same jobs in. So I have written down um, eight things and I want to go over these. So the first thing that uh, you're ready to do is plant your seeds. Now this is directly sowing into your uh, garden, whether it is an in-ground garden or maybe an, a raised bed garden. Now is the time to plant your cool uh, vegetable crops and that would be beets, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, lettuce, peas, potatoes, radishes, spinach, turnips, kale, and collards. So if you enjoy those, uh, those vegetables, now's the time to get those in the ground. Um, the second thing that, and I get this question so many times, can I still plant bulbs? And they're talking about tulip and daffodil bulbs for Easter. Yes, you can. As long as your ground is not frozen, you can plant bulbs, and I'm telling you right now, you are picking these bulbs up for hardly nothing because all of the companies need to get rid of this stock. They can't save it for next year. They need these bulbs to be sold. So at this point, they're practically giving them away. And if it is that your ground is frozen, plant in a container. Um, you know, wherever you would like to see a little spring, plant you some bulbs. So also, this is the time when we are deciding what we're gonna have in our summer garden. So we are going to be starting seeds indoors. Now there is one method that I am going to do at the end of this video, and I'll go ahead and put the time up on um, the clip so that if you're not interested in the February garden chores and you wanna go straight to the milk jug sewing method. I am gonna take this milk jug and I'm gonna, within probably less than five minutes, show you how to make a mini greenhouse and use this to start seeds in. So if you haven't done it, if you are uh, a person that's new to seeds and maybe you're a little bit intimidated, this is practically a no-fail method. So we'll do that after we finish up with the, um, with the February chores. Um, continue to weed. Weeds will always be there. As long as there is air and there are birds, we are going to have weeds. So this is a good time to get out when your garden is, is somewhat bare and you can really look at the structure of your garden. And I'm telling you, the weeds are just fine. They're just living the life in your garden. So get out there and get those things out by the roots and put them in the trash. Don't try to compost them. In the trash they go. Um, continue to feed the birds. You know, our little feathered friends are still uh, in need of our help. So remember to uh, fill your bird feeders, throw out your bread, continue to feed our feathered friends. Prune your roses. If you haven't done so already, this is the perfect time to prune, to prune your roses and the crepe myrtles. Um, and I know that with our freeze, the crepe myrtles are looking a little iffy, especially the bark. I've seen some uh, bark on some crepe myrtles that it just looks terrible, but hopefully they will rebound and recover. But if you have um, established crepe myrtles, then you can go ahead and prune them up some. Um, I actually, my crepe myrtles are younger and last year I cut the seed pods off because that keeps them from dropping seeds and sprouting up um, saplings. So I had already kind of done mine so I don't have to worry about my crepe myrtles because they're younger. But if you have established crepe myrtles, get out there and take a look at them and see if anything um, is growing wonky that needs to be trimmed off. Um, continue to rake up your leaves and your plant debris in your garden. And this is a great time 
to put down uh, mulch. You know, by putting down mulch, that's going to help um, keep the weeds from growing. It's going to help to keep the, the water that we use to um, to water our plants, it's going to help to keep that moisture in. So uh, now's a good time um, to find mulch. And the last thing is to clean and repair your tools. And if you're like me, you have a lot of um, different statuaries and just different things in your garden and now's a really good time to look over those and if they need to be repaired or if they need to be painted now's a great time to do that so uh, i hope that you're getting out in your garden um, at least get out and walk around and just look at your garden in the winter time because this may this is the perfect time to see gosh i need more greenery in my garden i need to plant some evergreens um i always talk about a four season garden and that is something where you have interest in your garden all year long so all four seasons there's something in your garden for you to look at and now's a great time in in the winter months to get out there and see gosh i could use some more uh some more evergreens or some greenery in my yard um, maybe you want to put up a bird feeding station um, just something like that but now's a good time to do that so now we're going to jump into the second part of this video which is winter ready sewing to begin jug. Uh, i want to show you how to use just a simple jug to start your seeds and like i said for those who maybe are a little bit intimidated maybe they've had they've tried to start seeds haven't had much success this is pretty much a no fail way to do this and uh, besides it being easy you're not having to mess with grow lights the seeds that are started in here they are going to be acclimated to your temperature so there's not any of the hardening off that you normally have to do when you plant when you start seeds indoor under grow lights so the first thing we're going to do take off the take off the cap we don't need the cap step number one the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to punch some drain holes in the bottom of this and i would say at least four maybe five just however many you think that you would need but you want to make sure you have drain holes in your milk jug. <clears throat> okay, that's done. So the th second thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut this so that we can open it up and put our soil in. So all we have to do is you want to start back where the handle is. And you don't, you're not going to cut it completely off. You're just going to cut it enough so that you can get your soil and your seeds in and then you're actually going to tape it back up. So, all right. Doesn't have to be perfect or pretty. We're just making a nice cozy home for our seeds. So next we want to mark on this what we have. So I, I'm actually doing a wildflower blend. So I'm gonna put right here. Blend. And I'm gonna put the date that I started these seeds because I just like to do that. It's not necessary, but I just like to do it. Okay, so now we are ready to put in our soil and I have some soil here it is pre-moistened that's about the amount that we're gonna need and like I said the soil is pre-moistened so I'm just gonna slip on some gloves and I normally don't do this but because I'm handling my uh, my camera equipment I'm gonna go ahead and put on some gloves not even going to put down newspaper. I think I can do it that neatly. So here I am just putting 
the soil into the container. I do have this sitting on a plate. So get our soil in there. And so far, there isn't anything that we've done that uh, that's hard. I mean, it's just super simple. Most of the things we have laying around the house Super easy. Now, I usually do several of these, but I just wanted to do this one as a demonstration for all of you. So if you haven't started, you can get out there, start you some seeds. Okay, now I have my soil in the container. The next thing I'm going to do is sprinkle in my seeds. And uh, a question that I get asked a lot is, do you want to use a whole um, bag of seeds for one milk jug? You can, I don't, simply because it, it's gonna make too many and you're gonna have to throw them away or uh, you're gonna have to figure out some way to, to divide these plants. So, I usually don't use, depending on the seeds, but I usually don't use more than a quarter of a seed pack per jug. So then just press that down in there good. Now, this next part, I wasn't prepared for, but we have to tape our jug. And the only tape I could find in this house was masking tape. <clears throat> this will not work permanently. This will hold long enough until I can get out to the store and get some proper tape, which would be duct tape, is generally what I've always used. I know there's different kinds and different brands, but the way I do mine, I usually put some strips down, and I'll show you just in a second. I put strips down this way and then I go along the entire cut and like I said I will be replacing this tape because I know it's not going to hold outside it's, it's actually masking tape but it was all I could find so just about finished with this You have created the perfect environment for your seeds to grow and thrive. And it's taken us a little over five minutes, because of course I've been talking. So the last step is to put this outside in a southern exposure, preferably next to um, a building. So that it gets some protection but you just you don't really you don't have to do anything by keeping the lid off nature is going to water your seeds it's going to mimic nature and at the end of the process you're going to have some great plants to put in your garden so i hope that um, you'll give this a try and if you do please let me know and lots of luck with your winter sowing method the jug method Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the new subscribers, and I'll see you this Thursday.